Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. There are many things we have been trained to say. There are regions in this nation where the only way to show that you are pious is to express mediocrity at you can use words and tear yourself down the moment that happens people feel that you are pious we have embraced some of these things and we do not know that these have been the programmers remember the rainmaker teaching that for every time we do these things we feel it does not matter there are children parents who give birth to children and begin to call them certain names big head idiot where are you and the boy says sir for 10 years that boy was answering idiot by the time the guy gets to 11 years you have programmed a kind of rain what begins to happen to the guy his brain his thinking his creativity deflates to reflect the power of your word and now you begin to wonder why are you such a dull and a stupid child how about the teachers that train children in school? Many people do not understand the power and the implication of words. There are children who go to school and they begin to hear all kinds of things. Demeaning statements from teachers maybe, from their colleagues maybe, and they do not know that it's programming. I'm not just speaking psychology. Spiritually. Are we together? and destroy themselves and put themselves in positions of failure and then we say it does not matter and the realm of the spirit keeps recording it keeps recording it let me tell you the truth in this kingdom ladies and gentlemen kings reign by the dexterity and the excellency of their speakings the bible teaches us to beware what we say the moment the holy ghost is upon you there is power upon everything you say. Do you know one of the reasons why the gift of faith among the nine gifts of the Spirit revealed? The gift of faith does not rest upon people indefinitely. It comes and it goes. You know why? Because under the influence of the gift of faith, anything you say will come to pass. And if the gift of faith remains with you and you are angry, and you tell your wife, may God punish you and may you die. You just meant I am angry. And you see a dead body fall in front of you. Did you not read about, um, what's the, the name now? Those guys, at, um, Ananias and Sapphira. You have lied against the Holy Ghost. Bam. Right there. The wife came and did her own right there. Two of them, they carried their dead bodies hours apart. Where the word of a king is, there is power. So while you were declaring, this Abuja self is a useless place, a stupid place, this place, I don't know what kind of place is that. The realm of the spirit receives those words in vials and programs them into a climate. Now, please, I want you, if you don't believe this, you are not a Christian. The realm of the spirit is strict on speakings, especially when the anointing comes upon you. Hallelujah. Jesus made certain profound statements. Among them, he said, destroy this temple and after three days I will build it. Jesus himself, knowing the power and the prophetic implication of words. Words do not only reveal culture. Words program climates words program spiritual climates they can program a climate of possibilities they can program a climate of impossibilities many believers have found themselves saying a lot of things and saying it does not matter this is how i this is how we speak in nigeria they say this is how we speak in uk they say hallelujah there are regions of the world where they call people, they name them by animals, and they say it very wonderful. Oh, you are a dog. They, they say that to mean you are my friend, you are my close ally. You don't have to call me a dog.
to show the level of our friendship. Just, just my opinion. Are we together? And we answer some of these things, no wonder we start behaving like them. Words. The moment you begin to speak, remember you are a spiritual rainmaker, if I would use that expression. You are programming something upon your life. In Israel, for those of you who have had the opportunity to travel to Israel, historically, even up until today, when you curse somebody, it is a very big issue in Israel. You know why? Because they were trained they, they, from Judaism. They understand the power of the spoken word. When fathers want to bless their children, they don't give them physical things. They call them and from the depth of their spirit, they release prophetic words. What are they doing? Programming their climate. You see that from Abraham to Isaac, from Isaac to his sons. Why do you go and meet a man of God and you say, sir, bless me. And while you are saying, bless me, you are even putting your head down. What exactly do you expect to happen? He is not releasing anything physical. It's not his saliva you want to come on your head. Yet you are happy. And he says, may God bless you. You lift your hands and your head and say, amen. And you actually believe you received something. Are we together? Words are so powerful. It took words for you to be saved. Not just intention. Not just motive. Wishing to be saved was not enough to change you. You had to use words to verbalize your interest in God. Declare your helplessness and to ask for his grace and his mercy. Words are powerful. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. The Bible says in the beginning from verse 1, God created the heavens and the earth. Then verse 2 says the earth was without form. Please look up. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. I have taught you that theologically speaking, we call this the gap theory. There is still a lot of haziness between 1 verse 1 and 1 verse 2 because it is believed to be many years apart. It is believed that this confusion right here came as a result of the judgment of the then earth. Are we together now? It says the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3. Now the surprising thing is that God never discussed the issue of the darkness. When God looks at a chaotic situation, it was only fair enough for him to at, at least analyze. Okay, spirit of the living God, I can see darkness, I can see chaos, I can see this destruction. However, we are going to fix it. <clears throat> the first statement that he would make is light. Be. And the Bible says there was light. The Bible never said darkness fled. He says there was light because he did not mention darkness. What he called was what gained the emphasis there in that statement. There was light immediately. When it was time to make man, here comes words again, let us make man. My question is, did he have to say it? When he had the power to do it. I understand speaking light, but I mean, did he have to say, I will do it, then start doing it? It was wise enough for him to just make man. But he said, listen, this is what we are going to do. He spoke it and he did it. The same principle you find in Genesis 11. When Nimrod, the son of Cush, was going to build, they already had the materials, brick for mortar and slime. They would have just started the building. But they kept, they kept speaking. We are going to build. Are we together now? Words are very powerful. Words are not only informative. Words are creative. That means when you speak, you are not only speaking for awareness. Please believers hear me. You are not just speaking for enlightenment. You are also speaking for creation. Creation in this kingdom happens at the instance of words. That means the believer who is the creator is one who knows how to use words, not just to inform people of what you are doing. 
This is one of the reasons why names are powerful. Because names are not just a means of identification. Names are prophetic words. Every time people call your name and speak it, they are creating something or enforcing what has been created. No wonder Jabez changed his name. No wonder Simon, you know, changed his name. God had to change Abraham's name to Abraham. Because prophetic speakings are very powerful. It was at the instance of our speaking through worship that the presence of God mantled this place and things began to happen. Imagine when you come for service, someone sits down quietly and then a prophetic word comes and at the instance of that word, something begins to change. That means that thing could change, but that which makes it change was not yet spoken. Please understand this and you will find out that the results you will begin to command in your life will surprise you. Are we together? Say not before an angel, I made a mistake. In Matthew chapter 12 from verse 34 and 35, please give it to us. Matthew 12, 34 and 35. Jesus is rebuking the people now and he says, O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? Aha. Uh -huh. He's taking it a step further now to help us understand that while it is true that your speaking is what creates, controls, and manages your spiritual climate, there is something about your state and your speaking. Your being is where your speaking comes from. Are we together now? He says, O oh generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good? That means if you are evil, you will speak evil. If you are good, you will speak good. Your speaking will always be a reflection of your nature. Being evil, speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, Jesus is teaching us now how, how words are framed and formed before spoken. Out of the abundance of the heart, he says, the mouth speaketh. That means the mouth does not speak until the heart is full. When the heart is empty, the mouth cannot speak. But when the heart is full, inevitably, the mouth will begin to speak. 35. It says a good man. Who is that man? A good man. Out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth what? So, good man good heart, good things. Then he says, an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Please, I want you to follow very carefully. There are many believers who, when they teach about speakings and the power of words as a dominion principle, they do not focus on the heart condition. They just say, change your confession and don't speak negatively. And while that is sincere, the Bible tells us that as powerful as your mouth is, your mouth, your body is a slave to your mouth while your mouth is a slave to your heart. So the most powerful part of you is your heart. Your heart controls your mouth and your mouth controls your body. So when the devil wants to destroy your body, he does not just focus on your mouth first. He goes to your heart. Are we together now? And plants seeds of fear, seeds of defeat, seeds of death, seeds of mediocrity, seeds of limitation. From the abundance of that heart, the mouth will start programming a spiritual climate that has a physical implication. Job said the thing that I feared has come upon me. It started with his heart, then to his confession, the wife looked at him and said, why don't you curse God and die? Her heart was, her mouth was only a revelation of what was in her heart. So when you look at your wife or your husband and say you are a stupid and useless man, the problem is not what you said. And the answer is not sorry. The answer is transformation. 
Are we together? Because sorry can be a borrowed word that you can use. The real problem is that that speaking, when you look at your son and say you are a useless boy, you will never become anything. You are a foolish girl. You are a prostitute. And many people, Africa, we are victims of these kinds of things. People become angry and they speak and program destruction over their children, over their subordinates, over the people around them, and they wonder why the continent remains the way it is. Israel is a place that is in a desert and yet in that desert everything grows because they understand the power of speakings you get there the first thing you hear is shalom the peace of God rests upon you the children have been trained in other religions of the world even before a little child starts going into the regular schools with any kind of means and by all means they program certain things into their hearts first hallelujah most believers have not been trained to understand the power and the value of words and the key is not to mechanically speak well please look up this is what i want to correct you do not speak well just by intention your speaking is a product of your heart condition and your state so you find people who carry a semblance of being cautious bless you good morning and then the moment something pushes you your heart pushes away your brain and brings out what is really there don't talk to me or just because I'm in koinonia here you don't know who I am go and ask those who know me and then people become like wild animals and later you go back and then you say sorry it will not happen again and your heart says you are joking are we together out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks it says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart that means the man is not good is good because of the state of his heart people are not evil because of what they do people are evil because of who they are an evil man even if an evil man speaks good is still an evil man eventually the heart will betray him is someone learning now? Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire.